everybody. It's uh, Gary at Vintage Electronics Repair. Um, I haven't been around for a little while. It's been quite a while since I posted a video. But I'm back with another vintage radio repair. And this one is a lovely old mid-1950s Marconi Model 341. And uh, we're going to check it out. I haven't really looked at it yet. I just picked it up. Uh, it's quite filthy. We'll have to clean those knobs. And this grill here is dirty. Probably that is cigarette smoke, tar, nicotine. Um, so we'll clean that up. So this is, you know, 1950s radios tend to come in two main colors. Brown, which is the most common. And you see a lot of this sage. I call it sage anyhow. I love this color. It's a very much an automotive color. This is a very interesting radio in that the chassis, I don't know if you can see, the chassis is actually mounted vertically rather than horizontally. So we will, oh, and there's the tube layout. It's your standard All-American 5 um, with uh, 12 BA6, 12, uh, 35W4, 12 BE6, 12A6, AV6 rather, and a 35 uh, power tube. So one of the ways that you can tell this is the Canadian radio is by these Robertson screws. The Canadian screw. And interestingly enough, although it does, the tube chart calls for a 35 L6 power tube, I see this one has a 50. And our antenna, loop antenna, which is right here, looks pretty good condition, is not connected, so we'll have to fix that. And we'll be testing the tubes. All right, let's take this shield off and see what we're working with. Okay, so we have the speaker in behind that grill. And that looks to be the original multi-cap uh, filter, supply power supply filter capacitor. And I think it has a date code of 1953. Okay, well, this is what we're working with. Well, it's quite compact, isn't it? Huh, looks almost modern. Um, is everything original? I'm not sure that's original. Might be, because there's a similar one up here. All right. Well, there's some paper wax capacitors here and here. Big power resistor here. Hmm. Well, we'll have to replace those caps. Replace the uh, power supply filter capacitor. And uh, see if we can get these up, this up and running. We'll have to test the uh, tubes. That'll be next, I think. Well, I lied. This is a six tube radio, one, two, three, four, five, six, not five. And typically in a six tube radio, you have an extra, in this case, a 12 BA6, which is serving as an initial RF or radio frequency amplifier. So that is boosting the signal that's coming in off of the antenna before it goes into the converter 12 BE6 tube here for mixing. Okay, so let's test these tubes and see what they look like. I see that this uh, power tube here has a 19, I'm guessing that's a 1961 date code on it. So that's a replaced tube, not surprising. So I have my trusty Ico 667 tube tester and we'll start by testing the tower, the power tube. I'll just test one on video and then the rest off camera. And this is a 50L6. So we're going to set the filament to 50 volts and I'll Look at my trusty charge here. Make these additional settings. Do, 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 do. We're setting the pins now. It's 
drilling, huh? Okay, good to go. Oh, no, I have to set the line voltage. So, because line voltage can vary quite a bit, we want to calibrate it with this. There we go. All right, so we're ready to test. So, the buttons I want are three. That's fine. We're looking for leaks here. Four, five, and then eight. This should go up here, and as I press this, uh-oh. So you can see here, there is a heater to cathode leak in this tube. So there's essentially a short between the heater and the cathode. That tube is no good. Well, there you go. I don't know if I have any more of those or not. Let's find out. So aside from that uh, bad 50L6, the 12AV6 is great, almost like new. 12BA6, the first one, almost like new. The 12B6 is quite weak. That would still operate, but I think I have plenty of replacement BE6s, so I might change that. The 12 BA, the second 12BA6 is 140, so that's fantastic, and the rectifier is full blast. So everything is great except for the 12B6 and the 50L6. Of course, the, it originally calls for a 35L6, so I may have one of those. I'll take a look. I actually have several 50L6s. They don't have any 35s. So we'll, we'll try it with the 50, see what happens. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, schematic. So the same chassis, chassis 419, is used for three different models. 341, 379, 389. There's a 379, which as you can see is quite a bit different from our radio, which is model 341. So same chassis used in different radios. Um, so we have our line voltage coming in here and it's going into a, an, an auxiliary power outlet that you can use to power a record changer, a turntable if you wish. And there's a phono jack here that you would plug the turntable into. So this is not uncommon from this era. I guess uh, amplifiers weren't that common. So um, you would take your record player and hook it into your radio and play it that way. Uh, usually slightly more high-end um, radios would have that feature. Anyhow, line voltage goes through there. We have a little def cap here that's used to filter out any RF that's coming in off of that um, line voltage. And we go through our Mazda 47 power or pilot light and through the filaments of the six um, tubes. And then that power goes through this, our, our little 47 ohm resistor into the rectifier, the plate of the rectifier. So that's AC coming in and coming out of the rectifier is DC. That DC is then filtered by the uh, multi-cap can that I referred to earlier, which has a 40 microfarad, an 80 microfarad, and a 20 microfarad cap. And those are simply taking any AC ripple that's left on that rectified uh, DC, I guess, and sending it to ground. So the power then goes up to the output transformer and into the plate of the power tube or the output tube, uh, looking in, and onward throughout the system. Looking um, from the other end, our signal's coming into the loop antenna, our high frequency radio frequency sim, uh, signal. And uh, there's a little trimmer cap here. And then into that first 12BA6, which is amplifying the RF. And then we have uh, our um, local oscillator coil and our local oscillator, which is gained with this um, uh, variable capacitor to set the station if you like. That signal is going into this mixer tube, the 12BE6, which is then outputting, among other things, a 455 kilohertz intermediate frequency, as it's known, or IF, that is modulated, amplitude modulated, hence AM, in accordance with the RF signal. So it's basically encoding that um, audio signal, which is very high frequency at this point, um, which is already encoding the audio signal. I should say it's encoding the radio frequency, which is encoding the audio signal, and it's encoding it 
into this intermediate frequency that then the system can more easily filter. So that 455 uh, kilohertz signal is going through this first IF transformer to filter out anything that's not 455 kilohertz into this next amplifier tube and then into another transformer for more filtering and on to the 12AV6 which amongst other things is serving as a detector these two diodes here and that is turning that intermediate modulated intermediate frequency into an audio frequency signal which is then sent on to the output tube and to the output transformer and to the speaker and there you go that's a radio <laughs> so uh, let's see um, let's see how that translate into actual uh, components on the chassis first thing that we're going to do is to replace this power cord because obviously that's not usable and we'll put in a polarized cord in there well I've realized that I'm all out of brown power cords so I'll make a quick trip to the dollar store and buy some extension cords and away we go but in the meantime I think I'll replace these capacitors um, one two three four five six caps and there is that couplet that has some small value capacitors in it hopefully that's okay otherwise we'll have to replace those individual parts and away we go i think i'll start with this one this paper wax capacitor here which is the most challenging because it's buried in behind everything else um, so we'll just clip it out see what the value is can't quite figure out which one it is from the schematic might be 0 0.05 and uh we'll get that back in yeah it's a 0 0.05 microfarad arrow box all right well let's get that in there. well because of the amount of stuff that is soldered to these posts and one of the beauties of wire to of uh, point to point wiring is you never actually know without paying a lot of attention whether that post is just uh, a non-used post that's just being used to bind these different things together or whether it's actually a relevant pin of that tube or not you can look at the schematic and figure that out pretty quickly but uh, quite often you'll have all kinds of things attached so in this case I'm not going to bother unsoldering that and soldering the other piece the new capacitor in instead I'm just going to create a j-hook and I've added some spaghetti covering here as was on the original to protect it from shorts and we'll just j-hook that on there Okay, so that's done. Off to the next one. There is this little 0 0.003 microfarad cap between the plate of the power tube and the output transformer. So that's right over, let me show you. That's this guy right here. So we'll replace that right now. And you can see that just crumbled when I removed it. So that was ready to go. These are crappy, these hunts, these hunts capacitors, garbage. Okay, that's in. Next up, this guy. These two. Oh no, look at that. There was another one snuck in behind those. Hmm. We'll have to track those down on the schematic. Okay, so that little sneaky guy is in. That was a 0 0.005 connected to the uh, pin 7 of the 12AV6. Here's something interesting. Look at this. This um, resistor was just hooked onto this post. It was never soldered. 70 years ago, somebody made a mistake. <laughs> is that something? Okay, so all that stuff is done. Now we move on to these two. Okay, those are done, and we have an extension cord ready to go. Turn this into a power cord. Okay, so the power cord is in hot to the switch and now we turn our attention to this multi cap can here this is the power supply filter capacitors okay so what we have here is an 80 microfarad a 40 microfarad and a 20 microfarad uh, I don't have any 80s <clears throat> I have lots of 47s 
<clears throat> so we're going to use two 47s in parallel for the 80 and then a 47 for the 40 and then a 22 for the 20. <clears throat> and uh, let's make that happen. Okay, so here's what I did to replace this multi-cap can, which has an 80 microfarad, a 40 microfarad and a 20 microfarad. I use these individual electrolytic capacitors and I use a terminal strip, although I'm not using the ground terminal because I don't want a chassis ground at this point. And uh, I actually had some pushback, modern pushback wire. So I used that where I could. So there's green for the ground and then this yellow one. And I didn't have any red, unfortunately. <laughs> so I used a vinyl red one. So the modern uh, pushback is looks like the old stuff except that it has an interior of vinyl coating, uh, which is fire resistant. Of course, the old stuff is no longer up to code. So anyhow, that should take care of it. I think we've done all the wiring we need to do and we're just about ready to test this thing. So we have it hooked up to a light bulb limiter and an isolation transformer and a variac. <laughs> And I have the speaker hooked up. I have the antenna hooked up. I think I have it turned to radio. I'm just going to give it some power slowly, bring it up on the Variac. And we have the light bulb, the pilot light, which I actually didn't bother changing. This seems to be lighting. So we're getting some power from the, at any rate. Uh, but that doesn't mean too much. So, the question is, can we get any noise out of this at all? So I have it up to uh, 90, about 100 volts. Usually these things start kicking in around 90 volts. But with the isolate, with the uh, light bulb limiter, that might change things a little bit. Oh, there you go. We're hearing some noise. I wonder if we can get any reception. I only have one AM station in this neighborhood. Hey. Wow. Well, the reception's not great, but we got her working. So what we'll do now is we'll do an alignment and uh, we'll see whether we can improve that reception. Hey. So we have our fluke hooked up to the output. And we're trying to peak that AC output by with a non-magnetic screwdriver, plastic screwdriver. We're going to adjust these IF transformers. And we have a signal of 455 kilohertz. And we can see we're increasing the sensitivity there. as far as that guy's going to go. Try this one. Ooh, they weren't too far off, actually. It's still a little bit noisy. That's not bad. A little noisy. 